Half of Bondi Beach is now in lockdown. It's incredibly dangerous and it can be fatal if it's left untreated. What? The man looks for an escape route. I haven't dealt with something like this on Bondi Beach. I'm armed with a green whistle and a radio. A cloudy day midweek at Bondi. Lifeguards aren't expecting a busy workload. He's got a blade with him, he's got a switchblade, he's got quite a long knife on him. It's illegal to carry large knives in public. Thank but you so much. Somebody's just yeah. told me he's got a knife. That's yeah. Not funny. Uh, yeah. All right, I'll okay. give the cops a ring. Thank What's you. Got, I'll go for a walk up there. You won't notice me. Head lifeguard Hoppo makes his way to the scene. Reaching the grassed area, Hoppo IDs the man reported to have a knife. More lifeguards are drawn to the scene as fresh reports come in. What's he look like? He just whipped out a blade. Just, uh, like a black tank top. Black tank top. Hi. Hello. Um, there's a man over there with a uh, knife. Just had a report that there's a guy up in the park and he's got a knife. From first look at him on the binoculars, he doesn't seem like he's doing anything. It looks like he's just lying there. But obviously, if we get an, uh, we get something from the public about someone having a knife, it's pretty serious. You don't know what his next action's going to be. I reckon let's just get the cops down here. Right Drop it. I'm calling them now. Reedy and Hoppo step in until police arrive. So when I got up to the grassy you knoll, I was kind of looking around and it was quite hard to figure out who it was with the knife. With nothing happening in the water, Harrison heads down as backup. Reedy and I got to north. And, uh, look, we were pretty, you know, concerned about our well-being because you don't know the mental state of this guy up there. You don't know what could happen. Reedy scans the vicinity for local police. It's not a decar here, is it? Nah. Where is he? Reedy decides to take a closer look and picks up some protection on the way. And I walk past a family with a cricket bat. Can I borrow your cricket bat? Can I borrow it? Yeah. Sarah? Just, just need it just for something that... Just a situation that might. It was an old grey nick, and I just thought it doesn't get much better than this a cricket bat. Where is he? North to Bondi, go through. Yep, yep, cops are on their way now. Within a few minutes, we we're up there. Sirens lit up Bondi. In less than three minutes, four vehicle units arrive. Extra units follow up on foot. What is all going on? The suspect isn't waiting around to be questioned by police. Once the suspect saw myself and the cops walking towards him, he was out of there. He just did the Bible. Lifeguards and police are unsure if the man is still armed with a knife. The best weapon to take to a knife fight probably be a taser or a gun, which the police have. I'm armed with a green whistle and a radio. The man looks for an escape route. Yeah, he's, he's running back towards. He's on the ground now. He's gone into someone's house. So I'm watching this man in front of me like Spider-Man just launching into houses. Where is he? He's on the, in that like big um, yellow... He's on the yellow... Oh, what? I've got another car, send him up Ramsgate Avenue, but that's where we'll end up. There's a full-on police chase happening right now. The chase moves onto the streets of North Bondi. We're searching through the units and uh, he seemed to disappear and we're worried he just slipped through the net. Hoppo, Reedy and Harrison assist, but the man seems to have slipped through. After a while of searching, we're struggling to find him and 
didn't know if I wanted to find him or not, you know. He's, he's got a knife. Okay, let's go down there. Then, a sighting of the man at North Bondi Headland. Sarah's got him tackling down. What? Who tackling him? Yes, as we were running after him, uh, one of the cops were on the other side and basically just crash tackled him as he as he ran across the park. Is that it? Yeah. Is that your answer? It's my name. Yeah, really? Obviously, you must have something going on to uh, to run and, and not just stay around and talk to the police. And then here comes flying past. The chase has captured the attention of Bondi's local kids, teenagers, and hipsters. I could have dead set put my arm out and an ankle tapped if I hadn't known who he was, but I thought he was an undercover. <laughs> Hectic. The man was taken into custody. The charges were dismissed on mental health grounds. The police were very professional and turned up quite quick. We worked in well together, which was really good to see, and the outcome was great. We ended up apprehending the person. Back at the tower, Harrison and Hoppo recount their fearless community service. Everyone's watching me and I'm doing this. It's fine. <laughs> I just didn't want to slip over. Did you have a lot of adrenaline chasing you? I felt confident when I had three undercovers following me with guns. <laughs> <laughs> all back to Kitty's Corner again, you know? It's all nice and safe down here till the next drama. <laughs> you might have to go here. The woman is over 100 metres from shore. Unable to get a visual on her, Lockie's hope is that he will somehow find her out the back, still afloat. The way the wind was, the subtly hit, you know, you couldn't really see her at all. Now past the break, the wind was so strong, it makes it really hard with the big boards. It like sails, it just catches it. Yeah, she wasn't in a good spot. When I was out there, she was hanging on to someone else's board. She's fully gassed when I get to her. She's actually quite white. You know, that's when your panic sets in. Exhausted from the rough conditions, the woman can barely hold on. And she's so weak, she slips off. Where the f did she just go? That's just the worst thing ever. Where's she gone? I've lost her here. The woman makes a final attempt to stay alive. Water on the lungs can cause secondary drowning, even hours after the actual event. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm one of the lifeguards. Have you been drinking? Only four beers. Okay, so it's not a lot. She'd been running, surfing, swimming and walking all day and then downed four beers and went and jumped in the ocean right on the southerly change. It was kind of a cocktail for a small disaster. There was nothing of her. So if she continued to stay in this weather, she was going to turn hypothermic. I made a, a call to Triple O. I've got a young girl in her early 20s. I'd say she's got early hypothermia now. I think she's just worked herself up into a state of, like, hysteria. Hypothermia arises when a person loses heat faster than their body can produce it. It's incredibly dangerous and it can be fatal if it's left untreated. Police arrive with paramedics close behind. Police did arrive first. They thought maybe it was like the rescue retrieval or something going on. Yeah. 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 A little bit anxious at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Instead to try and control. 
an intensive care paramedic quickly establishes what the problem is. 35.9, okay? So your temperature inside your body, a little bit cold, all right? Normal body temperature is around 37 degrees. I'm too hot. No, no, it's what happens when inside gets a little bit cold, you think you're hot, okay? Okay. Martina is moved off the cold floor. Come in. Get up. Open eyes. Bang it in. Let me see that. That's much better. All right. Paramedics recommend Martina should go to hospital, but when she refuses, they settle on a final checkup in the ambulance. So it's really important whenever people swim um, to know their ability and, and if you're not a good swimmer, just make sure there's someone there like a lifeguard or a, a lifesaver to look after you. It's Valentine's Day, but before lifeguards head off for their own romantic rendezvous, a new incident. Do not have the police or military. Yeah. Oh my god. Where was it? Just in the water. I don't want to put it. Flammable. Looks like a bomb. Nah. No, don't say that. Unwisely, Kyle gives it a nudge. Kerbox is more cautious and calls police. Good mate, listen. Um, we just got this thing washed up on the beach. It's like a um, metal cylinder. And it says it contains phosphorus. It says if if uh, found or whatever, notify police or the military. To arm for hand launching, rotate cover. Uh, seems like it'll like you'll put it in something that'll like shoot off. Uh, it does look like some kind of rocket. Oh, this is something. Do not push your base plug in. Don't yeah, please, that. no one touch it. Yeah, no, this is no actually kind of serious. Actually. Yeah, the police are pretty concerned. Actually, they said, mate, whatever you do, just stay there and don't make sure no one touches it. Um, it could explode. Do not touch it. Don't Too late. Near it. Don't touch it. Never a dull moment down here. Have a look at it. It's ridiculous. As a jogger nearly treads on the explosive device, Kyle decides to create a one metre exclusion zone. Put a bomb on the beach. Just in case some runner just almost kicked it. Bondi keeps throwing me these curveballs. <laughs> this beach is out of control. We got 40,000 people, half of them trying to go out and drown on us. Now we got bombs washing on the beach that isn't really helping us. These two girls found it up. Semi submerged in the water while they were swimming, and they um, picked it up and brought it up here, and that's when they notified us. And it has like instructions on how to arm it, so you can imagine it's kind of serious. Local police call the bomb squad. Yeah. The exclusion zone is immediately expanded from one meter to thirty. Now we got some some kind of explosive or something on the beach, and we're about to leave, and. It says call the military or the police immediately. And a couple of girls... Kerbox's romantic evening is suddenly on hold. No, I wouldn't be ringing you if it went off. Shortly after, the police rescue squad arrives. They expand the exclusion zone from 30 metres to 300. Half of Bondi Beach is now in lockdown. Another interesting day at Bondi. Whatever's inside the mystery cylinder must pack a punch. Yeah, we got... We already been there. For Harry's and Kyle, it looks like a late night at the office. We're going to get the, the police want our assistance down there. They, they haven't got enough manpower, and there's a lot of people gathering. Um, we're not trained as lifeguards in bomb management, but we've got a duty of care to the public, so it's really important that we kind of help out. <laughs> Everyone's tired. They've just worked 10 hours on the beach, but what do you do? You just do your best. Got to help out here. It's definitely escalated, mate. Got how we got Harry's back in with him. He's come back to help us out. So yeah, it's all up. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, can we all move back another hundred metres, please, from this area, just for your own safety? Just help us out. Now, if we stand around, it could be a very serious matter. Move right back, thank you. What started as four witches hats around the explosive device has become a lockdown of Bondi Beach. So we're going to stop this traffic coming through. They don't want cars. You guys want to move up to Campbell Parade for us? Thank you. Come on, up to Campbell Parade. Thank you. They've found something down on the beach. Yeah. It's a bit dangerous, so like move what? up to Campbell Parade for us. That'd be great. Thank you. Okay. We've got dinner reservations down there. On a night like this, Bondi is no place for lovers. Thank you. Then, 
Defence Force bomb experts arrive. Special equipment is brought in to disarm the explosive device. They've just asked me if we want the tower, because <laughs> the tower could get blown up. Uh, and a lot of the glass in the surrounding area. This is amazing. I've never dealt with something like this on Bondi Beach. <laughs> right when you think you've seen it all, yes. a bomb comes ashore at Bondi Beach. Something I've never dealt I with in Hawaii. After three tense hours, the explosive device is finally disarmed. Police give Hoppo the all clear. Satisfied that everything's safe, so we're going to go. Uh, we'll take all our goodies with us and everything's declared safe. So, yeah, thanks, Thanks. They've uh, gone down and defused the uh, bomb or whatever it was that flooded in and they've caught it all clear and everyone's moving away and it's all over. It's not until the next day that lifeguards find out the nature of the device and how dangerous the situation was. Now, I'd suggest that if you were holding on to that and the scuttling charge operated, the experience of that would be probably similar of trying to hold on to the nozzle of an oxyacetylene torch. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. Very, very hot. Oh, yeah. uh, lots of molten metal, which gets thrown in the uh, probably around about 10 to 20 metre mark. Yeah. Uh, the item at Bondi completely failed to initiate, so it was fully armed and live. The mystery cylinder was a military flare used in anti-submarine operations. The two girls I thought, they grabbed it and they came to the beach and she's kind of like holding it and shaking it. Would, would that have done anything or not really? That is an undesirable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's... <laughs> a bomb scare seems a reasonable excuse for missing a romantic dinner on Valentine's Day. But perhaps the lifeguards were meant to be together anyway. Yeah. Oh, Valentine's Day. Yeah. Oh, hug Hoppo and Harry's and... Oh, oh. <laughs> oh once again. Yeah. Once, once again, again, we're by ourselves. Once again. <laughs> the <laughs> Lord Rangers! <laughs> <laughs> right? This is how it ends every year. There's someone holding him. Head's holding him. We're going to race last year. Stand by, Dana. We might need a DQ. We're going to have to get a DQ down there. You turn around and grab the DQ. That's all right. A swimmer has drowned at Bondi. Face blue, no pulse. He's clinically dead. I'm just going to keep going until you get this ready. Just keep going. Okay. To restart his heart, lifeguards may need a defibrillator. Pulses as well. Can they be called? Can they be called? Let's get the defib. No, give... Maybe we need someone to come up and get a defib. The defib is in the tower, but Dunno can't leave the control post unmanned. Let's clean stuff up. Come on, come on, come on. 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 Dunstan has no choice but to enlist a passing backpacker. Oi, guys, guys, you do me a massive favour, man. Green shorts. Oi, man, you need to run this down. Oi, 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 buddy. Do us a massive favour, man. You need to run that down yes. to the other side of the flag. See that flag, the flag down there? Someone's just drowned. Get down there. I, need good, good. I, promise, I, need good. I promise, I promise. Get down there, man. Run, run. Oi, run. Run, man. We need to get him up in the dry sand. I mean, the third round now. Where's that deep in? Yeah. He's now been clinically dead for three minutes. 21, 22. Keep going, Chabba. Someone give Chabba a break. Yeah, I'll come in, I'll come in. Come on, dude. Go. Right out. Let's go. Go out of the way. You need to get him out of the way. Go on, I need some cash, mate. I'll come in. Just yeah, like, yeah. Wait, mate, can you, hey, please, please. Hey, get back, mate. Yeah, but we're happy we've done this a lot of time. Keep going, Matty. Okay, two breaths, two breaths, mate. One, two, slow down. Let's go. That's on. It's now four minutes since the man was first discovered. No one knows how long he was under the water before then. Thank you, John. It's critical that no one touches the man's body while it is shocked. Get up, I know you can't touch, don't touch him. him. Don't touch, don't touch him. him. Don't touch him. Don't touch him. You'll get electrocuted. Check airway. Someone's 
Don't think I'm breathing. If needed, begin CPR. Okay, I've got a pulse. I've got a pulse. I have a pulse. Okay, uh, do you want to have a pulse? He's responding. He's responding. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's breathe with him. Breathe with him. I've got a pulse. I've got a pulse. Breathe him up. Breathe him up. I've got a pulse. I've got a good pulse. Yeah, we're going to breathe him up. We've got a pulse. Good work, boys. He's all right, mate. We got him. We got him, mate. Keep breathing him up. Oh, good pulse, Shepard. Yeah, it's all right. Continue. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Let's try on three. One, two, three. Let's see if we can clear his airway. Give him a better. See if he can vomit. Yeah. Take the good airway. Yeah. Continue. If he doesn't, he's got a lot of fluid coming out. That's what we want to do. That's good. Let's just keep backing up. He's got a good, good. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of fluid coming out. That's good. Drive back. Back. Let's go a little bit more. But lifeguards' work doesn't let up. Swimmers are now in trouble at South Bondi. We need someone down there. Essential to one of the boys doing the recess. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, we're going to take him down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think he might have hit his head on the bottom? No. Can he swim? No. I think he's coming around, but a bit more oxygen. Yeah, okay. He's getting a lot more colour in his face. Then, only minutes after being brought back to life. You're right, mate. Hey, 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 It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, buddy. You're right. It's okay. You're okay, you're actually doing it. I thought to put him in recovery. Get the therapy mask. Yeah. Who's his brother? It's all right, mate. It's okay, buddy. You're okay, mate. He's obviously in my still needs urgent medical care. Good. We've done a good job. We've done the place. Close friend Dan is by his side. All right, mate. You're all right. Hey, guys. How long till we came to? Probably about maybe four sets of CPR. Four hours, five, maybe. So there was CPR? Yeah. Precaution still needs to be taken in case of other injuries. Grabbing this spinal board so it came off. Good work done, eh? <laughs> With water in his lungs, Ryan is still at risk of cardiac arrest and secondary drowning. One of the first to reach Ryan was former lifeguard Matt Cahoon. Yeah, I was just out body surfing, a whole lot of kids had the yeah, they're doing the right thing. I sent Matt over on the board, he's whacked a breath into him. Maxie on the jet ski came across. I jumped on the back of the jet ski, he was gone, he was vomiting up, his eyes were rolling. Someone handed him his arm, pulled him up by myself, dragged him up, and um, one of the swimmers out there was the next lifeguard, and I said, mate, get on, and like, you know, start, start compressing. Took him straight in. To be honest, I thought he was um, gone. At St Vincent's Emergency, Ryan is still in critical condition. Paramedics brief doctors. Dragged to the beach. The lifeguards put a automated defibrillator on, they didn't shock him. As we're coming in, he's complaining of neck pain. Dan is eager for news. Um, he was very, very badly hurt in the in the water. His lungs were full of water. So we have had to put a tube down his throat and a machine is ventilating him. In his stomach as well, a lot of water. About We had about half a litre of water in there. You want to see him? Yeah. He's very lucky, very lucky to be alive. CPR started straight away and that's what was needed. Instant, early, effective CPR. And the guys at the beach have saved his life. A week after Ryan Kim was brought back to life, First aid expert Jamie Twy holds a debrief session. It's the first time I've seen this, so let's let's have a look. Oi! Bring him up, boy! Get him out of the water! 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 That guy is so blue. 
Obviously, no no spinal precautions taken here, but listen, your priority, the guy's blue, he's not breathing, he's, he's a drowning victim, you need to get him out the beach and start working on him. There's a lot of water coming out of him now. At this stage, I would have rolled him and, and tried to get some water out of him. Okay? Yeah, so here, right, we stop here, we stop here. He's starting to breathe. He's starting to breathe. He's starting to respond to that CPR. As they fine-tune their skills, Hoppo arrives with a dead man walking. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hey, hey, you look a little bit different. <laughs> Do you want to watch this from the start? Yes? Yeah? OK. All right. Here you are. Hey, get him out of the water. Get him out of the water. Get him out of the water. And then we'll start compressions up here. OK. Yeah, come on. Get him off, get him off. Yeah, we need a mask, mask, mask. Oh my god, I was dead. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, dead. Now you're back. There's no more dramatic story to take back home. Do you remember what happened? Uh, I swim in the sea. Yeah, yeah. Then big waves cover me. My body is turned over in the sea, yeah. so yeah. I drank too much, too See, much water. sea. Salt water, yeah. yeah, salty water. I can swim, so I tried, I tried that, but and another, another wave here. Yeah. Maybe uh, three times. Yeah. I I give it, keep it, give up. I fall in water. Oh, above yeah. your head, yep. Yeah. yeah, everything is so comfortable, and and then I think, oh, it's die, it's it's die. Oh, I'm very scared. And then my memory is slowly, slowly shut down. First, I wake, wake, wake him up. Yes. Uh, I hold crap. Oh, really? You remember? Yeah. Very much. You remember? 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 You Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's good to see you smile. Thank you very much. It's pretty special to, to meet the guy and just to see him walking around. It's good. It's, uh, it's a good feeling. I, it's just wine oh, for you. Oh, we love wine. <laughs> Thank you very much. You know, the fact that you brought something about the life and I was about to contribute to that, you know, I feel really good. He's in his mid-20s. A life expensive another 60 years, you know, so... And he sees another beautiful day.